Guys, we need to talk about Thanksgiving. I know a lot of you have been following along my journey from MasterChef, but I'm gonna show you four super easy sides, appetizers, things you can make to kind of bring over to mom's house, bring over to a friend's house. We are going to impress them this Thanksgiving. We got four recipes going down and we're going MasterChef style. So I'm cooking them all for you in real time to show you that you can make four sexy appetizers in what well, we'll try for 15 maybe 20 minutes somebody start the clock it's me chef michael here from master chef everything you need to know is at chefmichael.com we also got the full recipes on the blog for all of these but we're gonna start the clock and get started the first thing we're gonna do is a super easy dip this is a classic jalapeno artichoke dip we just need a little bit of equipment it's gonna do all the work for us we have a food processor so we're adding cream cheese. I have it softened, so it's been sitting out on the counter for a few minutes. We're gonna add some sour cream. Again, all of these, the full recipes are gonna be on the blog. So the link's in the description below, as well as just go to chefmichael.com or Google me or go to Instagram at Chef Michael. You'll figure it all out. I like it spicy. I'm throwing in a whole jalapeno. I just sliced off the stem only. I'm literally just throwing the whole thing in. We're gonna do a squeeze of lemon. I brought the little fancy thingy if you wanna be cute, but like, whatever. We're going in with some lemon juice. Also, if you don't like jalapeno, you could turn this into a spinach artichoke dip. Just put some uh, drained, either frozen uh, or fresh spinach into here and blend it up. And then I got a can. This is just a can of artichokes. The point here is being easy. I just drained off the water. We don't do anything around here without some salt and some pepper. Okay, boom, blend that up. Give it a second. We can pulse it a couple times. Okay, that's it. That was loud. Um, okay, so we got our mixture, and you can see it is super nice and smooth in there. I'm a sucker for miniature anything. Um, so I have the cutest little cast iron pan I'm gonna use to bake this, but by all means, use whatever oven safe dish you have. It gets like fluffy in there. That's what you want gets creamy, it gets sort of light and yet rich at the same time. Yeah, light and rich, that's, that's my life goal. I'm adding a little bit of shredded Gouda. Again, whatever cheese. Cheddar actually works really well in here, but it doesn't really matter. Do not judge me for licking my fingers. This is my kitchen, so I can do what I want. Going right down into the oven, boom. All right, which one should we do next? Do we wanna do goat cheese or are we gonna do some sexy marinated mozzarella? Let's do goat cheese, it's in front of me. Okay, so we're gonna do goat cheese. Now stop, 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 stop. I don't wanna hear it. I know goat cheese is not for everybody. If you have not tried like a garlic herb goat cheese, uh, it will change your life. So we got a couple basic ingredients here. A Ziploc bag, yummy. Um, garlic and herb goat cheese. I, like I said, I'm keto, so I have a honey substitute. If you're not keto, just use regular honey, obviously. And then this is some shelled pistachios. We're gonna take a Ziploc bag and drop in these pistachios. Seal it up. I am using this French style rolling pin. What you can do, you can smack it or you could kind of if you're more delicate, you can roll it, but like no one has ever called me delicate in my life. And I am just going and adding that pistachio crumble to a plate. Now all you need is a bowl, this herbed goat cheese, and can we pause for a second? Because I know, I know I get a ridiculous amount of lovely commentary on my YouTube channel about my painted nails. So I just wanna give you a little a couple words about this. First of all, stop being homophobic. I can do what I want with my body and so can you. So let's start with that. But there's actually a reason that I have my nails done like this. I have battled since I'm five, five freaking years old with like severe nail biting. Um, I have fake nails on because it prevents me from biting them. By doing a bright color, red, pink, blue, whatever, my brain sees it, my eyes catch it and knows that it's something that it should, it should be a trigger for me. So yeah, I mean, number one, even without that, I could paint my nails if I want to. All right, we've got our goat cheese in a bowl. I'm gonna eyeball about a tablespoon. Again, there's no right or wrong here. It's not in my recipe, but as I'm sitting here, I think some black pepper would be good in here. Okay, so a little black pepper. Just gonna take a little taste. Mm. 
All right, video's over. All right, I'm gonna use some gloves. It's kind of hard to wash your hands when I'm filming. Also, I wouldn't want to get goat cheese under my nails. I'm making little tiny bites for these little goat cheese honey herb bites. So I'm gonna use a tablespoon to kind of scoop out like an even dose. And then if you work quick enough, you can just get them into a little bit of a ball shape. You literally just toss it in and you see how you get the most beautiful little pistachio crust. And I will set that aside. Thing about the gloves is they're a little sticky. If you're using your hands, you can put a little bit of water on your hands, not like wet, wet, because then your balls will get wet. And you can see just like that, you have these kind of like, almost like a goat cheese truffle, like a savory, herby, garlicky goat cheese truffle. And like I said, if you don't like goat cheese, uh, cream cheese also works completely fine with this. Now, if you were serving these right away, you could put them right onto the serving platter. I'm gonna let these chill a little bit since they've been out on my counter. And so I'm gonna add them to something I can just toss in the fridge. A plate works just fine. And then I'm gonna use these cute little rosemary sprigs for like kind of a toothpick garnish that we can now make a cute little toothpick. This one might be too big. We can make like a cute little toothpick for our goat cheese. All right, so we've got our cute little baby garnishes. All right, these I'm gonna pop in the fridge and look how cute they are. We'll see, once it's all plated up, you're gonna see like how much of an impact these make. Okay, popping them in the fridge, hang on. Okay, we're back. We are moving on to step three. Three, mozzarella or feta. Let's talk about it for a second. One of my favorite things in the world is marinated mozzarella or feta cheese. So I'm gonna show you, it's the same recipe. You pick which one you wanna use. They're just different vibes. The feta is saltier and punchier. The mozzarella is like creamier and kind of more unctuous. So kind of really up to you. We are going to chop up some stuff. I've got all my supplies. Again, other than the cheese, you might have the majority of this already ready to go in your kitchen. The other option is making this with feta for a more Greek vibe. And when possible, buy feta in this type of container where it's full of water. Listen, okay. The brine means that the feta in here is real. It is fresh, it is alive and well. Think about it like a pickle. You wouldn't buy a pickle, maybe at the gas station, but you wouldn't buy a pickle not in juice. Same thing with feta. Now we're cooking. We're gonna be cutting up only three things. Like I said, this is not a cooking recipe. We're just doing a little bit of prep work and stirring it together and walking away. Um, Sun-dried tomatoes, I buy it in the jar like this. I find the ones in the jar to be still kind of juicy and plump. So we're gonna take um, a little handful of our parsley and a couple cloves of garlic. This is the only thing we have to deal with. We're going to just chop up all of these three and just gently rock back and forth as you run right through it. Don't rush whatever you're comfortable with, okay? And just a nice fluffy, we haven't crushed our herbs and that's really, really important. Unlike the herbs, we are gonna crush the garlic. So give it a good smack just to kind of smush it. We are not trying to make garlic paste. We are just kind of getting started on the chop. So we'll set that aside. Same thing, we're just gonna run through. I'm gonna stack up these sun-dried tomatoes and we are done. Okay, that's it. We got our nice little fillings. We got our mozzarella ready to go. We are also gonna add in a few dry spices. These dry spices are optional, but I just really recommend that you put all of this in because flavor, flavor, flavor here. We're doing a little bit of crushed red pepper. This one is kind of up to you. I like it spicy. We're also gonna do a little dried basil and a little dried oregano. And we are ready to cheese. So what we wanna do is open our fresh mozzarella. Again, if you're using the feta, drain it, cut it into even little half inch cubes. And I'm just gonna put this mozzarella down a little bit. They don't have to be perfectly dry. So I'll just kind of give this a little bit of a gentle pat. Again, perf ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Oh, okay. I'm mash. I'm I'm mash. And put those in right into our herbs. Salt. Pepper. Now, if you're using feta, leave out the salt. It's salty enough. But I'm gonna go heavy with the pepper. So that's it. We're almost done with this. The last thing you need is that extra virgin, extra virgin olive oil. You kind of just fill it up just to the top. You don't have to like swim in it. The oil or the brine will prevent it from turning. All those herbs just give it such a beautiful and vibrant flavor. So we're, we're living for the red and green. We're just like, come on. Like that is just divine. Dish number three, done. Which also means in perfect timing, our artichoke dip should be nice and bubbly and happy. So let's go check that out. Oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. Mm. Okay. It's burning hot, but I'm gonna actually just toss this back in the in the off oven. It'll just stay warm and gooey while we make the last course. We're going all out with this last one. You know, you're really trying to show out? We're gonna show out. Um, so we're gonna do some salmon bites done in the air fryer. We're gonna coat them in some herbs and spices. And you know, you know we don't play around here. So we are doing caviar, a little bit of caviar. And we're gonna take our salmon and just cut it up in even sized cubes. So we've got this little nugget. We're gonna cut this in half. And again, watch, one smooth stroke. That's what we're working with here. And I'm gonna cut that into two pieces, okay? So we're gonna do a nice cut down the middle. Again, I'm gonna kind of find where it wants to separate naturally and then kind of work with that. So I'm gonna cut these into nuggets, maybe one more, and we're gonna put that in there. Done. We're gonna season it up with some punch. Don't be afraid to season everything. Dijon, such an underused and delicious ingredient. It kind of helps this, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, about a teaspoon, about a teaspoon of Dijon. I got a lemon, I already just cut it in half, I forgot to show you. So we're gonna squeeze in a little bit of lemon um, into that salmon. You don't wanna go too crazy, we're not making ceviche here. We have some herbs de Provence. This is a sleeper spice. I wish more people used it. It actually has lavender in it. Like you can see the little lavender pods. Uh, just do a little pinch of that. Again, full recipes are at chefmichael.com. If you're not familiar, you know I have three cookbooks sold worldwide. So this is the third one that just came out last month. Get it, dinner in 30. We're doing easy, sexy, delicious food in 30 minutes or less. All right, so I got some uh, herbs de Provence in my salmon. I'm also using smoked paprika. You can just hit that with a little splash of oil just to keep it juicy. Um, but that smoked paprika adds another layer. It's sweet, it's smoky. It just makes everything taste like it was just outside on the grill. It's just delicious. That's all we're doing with the salmon. We are gonna get this into the air fryer as we finish up the rest. Okay, air fryer is preheating. It's probably loud as hell because air fryers are loud as hell, but so am I. So we'll make it work. We got our tray. Um, pro tip, it's a little baby spritz of nonstick. Just makes, just makes cleanup easier. All right, so you'll notice rather than dumping these out, I am setting them down and there's a method to my madness. Make sure everything can breathe. If you are cooking things in the air fryer and things are touching and squished together, it's not gonna work. You're just gonna steam it. You might as well microwave it at that point. So obviously you could fit more on this tray, but you really wanna make sure when you're air frying to give things some breathing room. If you have a small air fryer, cook things in two batches. And again, why am I so bad at this? Y'all, I forgot salt. So let's just hit it with salt. These are ready. We're gonna pop them in the air fryer. Boom, okay. Salmon's in the air fryer. We're moving right along. Last thing we're doing with this is a cute little shaved asparagus salad. What you need is asparagus, duh. When you can find them though, look at these big chunky boys. We, us chunky boys, like the chunky boys. <laughs> wow, that can be taken so many directions. Um, you take your raw asparagus, you'll take a vegetable peeler and you just uh, peel. <laughs> and now you're getting beautiful asparagus ribbons. With this portion, I probably only need about three or four stalks. 
And you can see we're just getting this really, I'm gonna clean up a little bit, get these into the bowl. But look how beautiful, isn't this insane? So pretty. We are gonna squeeze a little bit more lemon in there. The only other thing we're gonna add to this beautiful asparagus is a pinch of salt. Don't need a ton here um, because this is so delicate and I'm just gonna use my hand. Um, of course, a little olive oil wouldn't hurt to kind of dress it. In fact, I didn't do that in my recipe, but it's right here. Just a splash of olive oil. Everything's ready. And then the last thing, and we haven't even gone through the plating. I'm gonna put them all together for you in one swing. I got the cutest little things at um, Party City, the dollar store, I don't remember. These are little plastic, I don't know, like cute little teardrop spoons. And we're ready to go, I'm gonna pull it. I need things, where are things? Saved by the bell. Oh my goodness, look. Look at the beautiful nuggets. Can we talk about the juice in there? Like, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Mm. And I'm gonna crack open this caviar. Super fancy $10 caviar. Mm. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna put a little, oh, come on. I'm gonna take a little ribbon, maybe two ribbons. Make like a pretty little nest, little baby nest. That asparagus, the aroma of the lemon just instantly hit me, um, which is part of why it's there. And like, you know, citrus and fish, always classic. We're just gonna take like a little, we're just gonna take like a little, little thing of it, right on the center. Beautiful. All right, we're ready for plating. This is my favorite part. Okay, so we've kind of got all of our things made. Look how cute these turned out. Oh my God. Okay, I'm kind of obsessed with these, but we've got all these delicious things. So we're gonna put the caviar on here just because that's probably the most fragile. So we'll make those look nice and cute. We've got this looking beautiful. Make sure you get some of that sun-dried tomato like all over the top. So. It's calling people's names. Mm, 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 mm. We'll put those there. We'll leave these here for our guests to kind of. We're gonna do some of our adorable little goat cheese truffles. Little herbed goat cheese and Parmesan truffles. And then last but not least, our beautiful cheesy crispy Jalapeno artichoke dip. Oh, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. I don't care. I look dangerous. Ooh. The holiday hors d'oeuvre spread. All of this in under a half hour. Yes, all of them are super good, depending on how much work you want to put into it. A couple of them you don't even need to cook. All right, so let's quickly go down the line. We need to look at this. This is still hot, but I think I can hold it. But Look at the goo. Look at the chewy, delicious. Oh my God, it's still steaming. Mm. Mm. That is one of the best bites I've had in a while. I'm making a mess. I just can't get over how cute these are. Oh my God. Bro, those are wildly delicious. All right, we've got this beautiful sun-dried tomato marinated. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I have no words on that, but the last one. The grand finale. Mm. See you next time. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Chef Michael. Full recipe for all of these things separately and together are at chefmichael.com. For more of this content, I'm gonna get to work over here because these are ridiculously good. See you later. Bye. Mm. Mm.